Hey guys, it's Jake here with the trailer. Today we have a 2023 Audi Q5 and we're gonna be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install the e-trailer class three two inch hitch receiver. Adding a two inch hitch receiver to the back of your Audi Q5 is gonna allow you to carry bike racks, cargo carriers, or if you get the wiring kit too, maybe even tow small trailers. Um, the back of our Q5 has got a little bit of room for storage, but if you go on those longer trips and you wanna haul bulkier items like a cooler or some larger luggage, a cargo carrier is gonna be much easier to tie everything down onto, um, and you can bring that much more stuff. The other thing is, is that it'd be very, very difficult to fit a bike in the back of an Audi. Um, and if you've tried, you probably already know that. So putting a bike rack on the back allows you and your friends to take your bikes to and from the trail. Our hitch is gonna feature a two inch by two inch hitch tube opening, which is gonna fit a lot of accessories. That is the most common hitch size. Uh, we're gonna have a standard five eighths inch hitch pin hole to fit your standard hitch pin and clip or your uh, locking hitch pins. This hitch does not come with one, but you'll want to pick one up if you're wanting to haul an accessory. Chances are if you pick up an accessory from us, it's going to come with an, either an anti-rattle bolt or a pin. You're gonna have these nice large safety chain loops to be able to fit safety chains of many different sizes and styles um, so you can get those trailers down the road safely. If you need to pick up wiring to go with your hitch, uh, we do have them available on our website. The paint job on this is going to be a matte black triple carbide finish. Um, it is a powder coat. We've seen very, very good things out of this paint job. It doesn't really chip or, um, or peel off very easily. So it's gonna last for a really long time. Now a few measurements for you so you know what you're getting into. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper is about two and a half inches. You'll wanna use that measurement when it comes to installing accessories on your vehicle. Um, if you watch some of our videos on those accessories, they'll give you a measurement from the center of the hitch pin hole to the closest part of the accessory when you fold it up to the back so that you'll know whether or not that accessory is going to fit with this hitch on your vehicle before you even have to make a purchase. From the ground to the top inside of the receiver tube, it's about 14 and a quarter inches. Um, that is more than high enough so you don't have to worry about your accessories dragging on the ground. If you get a bike rack, I would recommend looking for one with a raised shank, uh, typically between two and four inches, so that you get a little bit more ground clearance so you don't damage your bikes. Now, as far as weight capacities go, this hitch is going to have a max tongue weight capacity of 750 pounds. You will want to check with your vehicle's owner's manual to make sure that your vehicle is capable of carrying that amount of weight. Um, if it's not, you wanna go with the lowest number between the hitch and the vehicle. Um, as far as towing a trailer with this, you have a max trailer weight capacity of 5,000 pounds. That is the trailer plus the load included. Now, when it comes to the insulation, this is a little bit more of an involved insulation. It doesn't involve any modifications to the vehicle, uh, but you will have to remove the rear fascia. With these Audi Q5s, um, the hard part about this is that when you take the fascia off, all of the wiring is hardwired, so it doesn't have a plug. Um, so you're not gonna be able to unplug it. And if you find a plug back there, some of them will have them. You can't unplug them because then you have to get your vehicle reset from the factory. So we'll have to leave our fascia plugged in. We'll take it off, swing it out. We're gonna set it on a cart because we're gonna be up on a lift. But if you have a table or um, you can set it down on some towels on the ground or something, get your hitch installed and then we can put it back on. But hopefully with my help, you're gonna be able to get your hitch installed. To begin our insulation, we're gonna have four screws on the bottom holding our rear fascia um, tied up to our vehicle. And then we're gonna have one in the back side of each of these wheel walls. So six screws in total. We'll use a T25 Torx bit to get those removed. Now this one can be a little tricky to get, uh, these lower screws. If you just use um, something like this small bit holder and then a, your drill bit, you can usually get in here and get it removed. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to remove this plastic piece along here to get to another screw that's back behind um, our decorative trim. I'm gonna tape off both sides of this, this seam here so that when we go to pull the rear face off, uh, we don't have to worry about damaging any of the paint. And I'm gonna tape this seam here too. After we get everything taped off, you'll want to just pull on this outer strip, 
pull outward and then work your way up. We're just going to pop these clips out until we get to about this point here where our tape stops. Now you may have to use a trim panel tool to help pop some of these loose. Um, they can get a little tight inside these clips. We'll just keep working it up. And what we're looking for is this T25 Torx bit screw that's holding our fascia section on. Now what we like to do here is once you got this piece pulled out, so you don't have to hold it out, just take a shop towel and then shove it up in there and it'll help hold that away. We'll just get this screw removed from each side of the vehicle. And we'll have three more screws on each wheel well. If you peel back the wheel well liner, you'll have one here, here, and one a little bit higher up right there. Just take that same T25 Torx bit to get those removed. Now we'll take a T20 Torx bit and remove these plastic screws that are on either side of our fascia. I'm going to be really gentle with them because they're not in there uh, very deep. And we'll just set those to the side. Now you'll want to take your trunk liner, flip it back, just prop it up out of the way. Then we'll have to remove this trim here on the back. Sometimes you can pull up on it and it'll pop loose like it just did for us. Um, and at other times you may have to use a trim panel tool like this or a screwdriver to pry up on one edge to get it started. Now on the back side of our skid plate here, we're going to have uh, two grommets on either side. Uh, one of them is going to have a little dimple in the middle. You don't want to use that one. It's the larger one uh, closer to the outside of the vehicle. We'll prop, pop this grommet out of here. And once you get that out, there's going to be a 10 millimeter nut back in there. Uh, luckily, we've got these little holes here we can look through in order to see. But you'll take your 10 millimeter socket. I just taped the socket onto our extension so we don't lose it inside this cavity. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen that until we get the nut to the end of the bolt. And we're gonna have to stick a magnet in there in order to get it off. Just pull that out like that. Now we're gonna have to get behind each of our side panels. So you just turn this little knob, lift that panel up and out of the way. Actually, this one's held on with a 12 volt plug back here. So we'll just set this one off. The driver's side one you can completely, completely remove. And then the hole you're looking for is exactly like this. these other two. It's just gonna be back here. You can feel back, it's right down here. We'll remove the 10 millimeter nut, just like we did before. Now we're ready to pull our rear fascia off. Um, we've got Tom here helping us. It's definitely better if you have an extra person because this fascia is so long and you can put creases in the plastic if you let it drop too much, um, especially with this fascia because we're not going to be able to disconnect it from the wiring. So it's going to have to kind of stay close to the back of the car. That's why we have this cart here. But you'll just want to pull back with your fingers on this, this fascia piece. Just gently pull back until you get all the clips removed. These bolts are probably going to hang up a little bit on you. So we'll just have to wiggle it until we can get it fully removed. There we go. So the wiring is not very long, so we'll have to stop right there, move our cart in, and that's exactly why we taped this, because this piece just rubbed right against that tape. So we'll leave our fascia right here and keep working on getting our hitch in place. Now we'll have to remove our bumper beam. We'll take a 16 millimeter socket, remove four bolts from each side. We're going to leave one bolt partially threaded in so that our bumper beam does not fall off. Now that we've got all our hardware removed, we'll, we can take our bumper beam and set it to the side. 
Now we'll take our hitch, slide it over the factory studs. Now once you get that up in place, we'll have a uh, get a friend of yours to help you hold the bumper beam up into place. Line that up with the studs. And then we can take our hardware and start getting it installed. Now we're going to repeat that process until we have all of our hardware in place. Now we'll come back with a 17 millimeter socket and get all of our hardware snug down. Now we'll come back with a torque wrench and torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our rear fascia, put it back up into place. Now what we have to do is we have to try to get our hitch into this opening. So we can slide the fascia back up into place. Now when you're putting this back up into place, you have to make sure that you're getting all these pegs lined up with their appropriate holes and you can get it slid on into place. Now from here on out, we're just gonna replace all the fasteners that we removed the way that they came off. The one trick I will tell you for these four nuts that are on those studs that are inside the holes, you wanna take your 10 millimeter socket, a small paper towel, and then take your nut and press it inside the socket and that paper towel is just enough to hold that nut in place while you thread this in and get it started. Once you get everything back to where it's supposed to be, that's going to do it for a look at and installation of our e-trailer class three trailer hitch receiver on our 2023 Audi Q5.